Hello everyone and welcome to our today's class. It is the second lesson on the topic uh, measurements one. So uh, in this topic actually I have a very interesting story at the end of the lesson so you can't afford to miss actually. So let me start by giving you the quotes of the day. Never complain, never give excuses, never blame anyone for anything in your life. Just do what you can where you are with what you have so today we are actually discussing volume so let's get started volume refers to the amount of space occupied by matter the amount of space occupied by matter the SI unit for volume is a cubic meter the cubic meter there are other units for measuring a volume for example we have what we call the milliliters we have the liters and we also have the cubic uh, uh, centimeters so let's look at how we can convert uh, each unit to uh, another one. So we use these conversions that actually uh, one milliliter is equals to one cubic centimeter. A thousand uh, cubic centimeters is equals to one liter. Then a thousand liters is equals to one cubic uh, meter. Then a million cubic centimeters is equals to one cubic meter. Now, uh, we can actually determine the volume of different objects uh, uh, depending on whether the object is actually regular or irregular. So let's discuss how to find the volume of regular objects. Now regular objects we mean by uh, those objects that have definite shapes. For example something like a square, something like a, a rectangle, something like a, a, a triangle actually. So in determining the volume of uh, regularly shaped objects we actually measure the, their lengths, of course, using a, a meter rule or any other relevant instrument and applying the formula volume is equal to cross-sectional area times height, which can be equal to length times width times height. Now, we can also determine uh, the volume of uh, liquids. Uh, uh, in determining the volume of liquids, we actually pour the liquid into a graduated uh, uh, volumetric flask or even uh, a burette and read off the uh, volume directly. Now below is a discussion of actually how to find the volume of irregularly shaped objects. Thank you. So we said uh, we can calculate the volume of uh, a liquid by use of uh, measuring instruments. Here are a few measuring instruments that are used in uh, determining the volume of a liquid. We have a measuring cylinder which is calibrated from 0 cm. It goes up to 100 we have a pipette which measures a 25 milliliter of a liquid then we have a burette now students should be very keen here because a burette starts from the maximum value that is 50 to the minimum value so that means that if you want to uh, calculate to find the volume of the liquid inside a burette for example if the burette is filled up to with a liquid up to the 30 centimeter mark so it means to find the volume of the liquid inside that uh, burette, you will take uh, 50 minus 30 centimeters. So that you, you get a uh, 20 cubic centimeter. Then here we also have what we call a volumetric flask. Sometimes we call it a round-bottomed flask. Then lastly, we have uh, what we call a beaker, which measures up to 250 uh, cubic centimeter. Now in... Uh, Reading the volume of water and mercury, one is supposed to position their eyes appropriately. One, when you are taking reading, using uh, if, if water is the liquid, then uh, you need to know that uh, water, the meniscus of the water actually curves downwards because of the stronger adhesive forces between the water molecules and the uh, glass molecules of the measuring cylinder. So one is supposed to place the eye level with the bottom of the meniscus if the liquid is water if the liquid is water but if you are taking a volume if you are reading the volume of a liquid if the liquid is mercury remember mercury has a meniscus that curves upwards because of the stronger cohesive forces between the mercury molecules so one is supposed to place the eye at the same level with the upper end of the meniscus of the uh, mercury meniscus then we can also determine the volume of irregularly shaped object. We say the irregularly shaped objects, these are objects that do not have a definite shape or they, are, they have irregular shaped. 
So one example of such an object is actually the, the stone. So there are two methods of determining the volume of a regularly shaped object. One is uh, by using a measuring cylinder and two is by use of a eureka can or what we call an overflow can. So here is a demonstration of how to determine uh, the volume of a liquid using a measuring cylinder. So uh, a liquid, for example, water is poured into measuring cylinder up to a volume, say, V1. Then the irregularly shaped object is immersed into the liquid and the new level of uh, volume, that is the, the excess volume as a result of immersing the stone into the water is also determined. So the volume of the stone will be equal to the volume, the water level uh, in uh, the, actually the measuring cylinder when the stone is immersed, that is V2, minus the water level in the uh, measuring cylinder when the stone is not immersed. So the volume of the stone will be given by volume 2, V2 minus V1. If V2 is something like uh, 50 cubic centimeter, then V1 was something like 20 cubic centimeter. So it means the volume of the stone will be equal to 50 cubic centimeter minus 20 cubic centimeter, which will be equal to 30 cubic centimeter. Now in uh, the Eureka can method, or what sometimes we call it the overflow can uh, method, so here is a, a, a diagram of uh, a Eureka can or an overflow can. It has a spout which allows excess liquid or water to overflow. So here we, we actually immerse the stone into the Eureka can, of course filled with the water up to the brim. Then we place a, a, a beaker or even a measuring cylinder at the end of the spout such that the uh, displaced water, the excess displaced water, we can actually collect it in the displaced uh, in the measuring cylinder. So the volume of the water, or the volume of the displaced water in the measuring cylinder, will be equal to the volume of the stone. You will understand this better when we do flotation and sinking in form four, whereby we'll be discussing the Ahmed's principle and the law of flotation. Now we can look at an example of a calculation involving a measuring of volume by a burette. So here is a, a burette. I've actually drawn it. So it starts from the 50 centimeter mark. Then uh, uh, the minimum mark is actually the 0 centimeter mark. So in this example, it reads the water level in a burette is at the 20 cubic centimeter mark. Full stop. A thousand drops each of volume 0 0.01 cubic centimeter are let out. They are let out. So they want us to find the new burette reading. So remember the scale of the burette starts from zero and actually ends at the 50 centimeter mark. So if water is filled in that burette up to the 20 centimeter mark, so we are saying that water is filled up to the 20 centimeter mark. So here is my 20 centimeter mark. Then we are being told that a thousand drops, each of volume, these are let out. So let's first calculate the total volume of a uh, thousand drops. So if one drop, if one drop is actually has a volume of 0 0.01 cubic centimeter, what about what about a thousand drops? So a thousand drops will have over one drop times 0 0.01 cubic centimeter which will actually be equal to two zeros will uh, remove the decimal so we'll have a uh, 10 cubic centimeter so they are telling us that if a thousand drops each of volume 0 0.01 cubic centimeter are let out so to let out it means the tap is actually opened and that water is flowing out of the burette so if it is 10 cubic centimeter that is flowing out so it means the new water level will actually drop down because the water is flowing uh, out so if it is 10 cubic centimeter, so it means the water level will actually move by 10 centimeter, 10 cubic centimeter from the 20 centimeter mark to the 30 centimeter mark. So this is a 10 cubic centimeter. So the, this will be the our new water level, the 30 centimeter mark. So it means the new burette reading, it means uh, the new burette reading, the new burette uh, reading will be equal to we take the initial burette reading that was at the 20 centimeter cubic mark, but the water is let out. So actually the level of the burette, the scale we are increasing, the scale is increasing of the burette. So we'll say plus uh, 10 uh, cubic centimeter, 
which comes to 30 uh, cubic centimeter. So the new birette reading will be at the 30 cubic centimeter mark. Now we have an exercise here concerning the same so students can actually try uh, and see whether they understood the example up there. So it reads the water level in a burette is 35 cubic centimeter full stop. If 20 drops of water are added what is the new level if each drop has a volume of 0 0.1 cubic centimeter. So remember here actually water is added so it means instead of the scale moving downwards you will actually be moving upwards so that is actually a hint. So I've indicated the answer here it is at the 33.0 cubic centimeter mark. Having discussed a few calculations concerning the uh, measurements using a burette, we have come to the end of our class today. But remember, I promise you that I, I have an interesting story concerning measurements. So here goes the story. A friend of mine actually uh, came with all the measuring instru instruments uh, in our bedroom. That is the micrometer screw gauge. He also came with a, a, a tape measure. He came with a meter rule and even a vernier caliper. So I was very curious to know why he had came with those instruments actually to the bedroom because I was wondering why he wanted to convert our bedroom into a laboratory. So he kept quiet for five minutes and then responded that today I came with this instrument just because I want to measure the length of my sleep. I want to measure how long I will be sleeping today. Nambiwa, bang is your chai, bang is your chai. Then I also have another question here. That imagine one day you get to your home, then uh, you find actually your father thoroughly beating your mother when your parents are not at home. What are you going to do? Thank you guys. This is a uh, Kind Tuition Academy.